Hey guys, it's Clyde here, and this is part four of our series of videos on setting up your computer to run off of E131 and outputting E131 from LOR, Lightarama, to an E682, which then can run these controllers that are here in front of you. These are a typical 27-channel uh, controller, nothing nothing special or fancy here uh, other than if you've watched some of my other YouTube videos you've seen how I've built these units how I've assembled them how uh, how they come together and uh, and the reason why I, I choose to use the boxes that they're in but uh, what I want to get right to is uh, the actual settings on these boards uh, these are probably, and, and if you order these boards, they're usually called Easy DMX. And the reason why they're called Easy is there's only really one major setting that you have to do uh, on these boards so that they operate correctly. And that setting is our dip switch, which uh, in a moment we're going to zoom in and, and have a look at. But what I want to go over in this video is the dip switch settings. I want to show. Uh, I want to get in and do a, a zoom in close of what it looks like where the where the board is attached with a DMX cable um, so that data goes to the board and then um, uh, show you how I split off the connections. We have a, a couple different things that we can talk about on this board. First of all we have uh, some data connections, we have some outputs, we have power input, but we have we have these uh, Cat5e uh, cable connectors to, to bring data into it. So pretty simple, pretty simple setup for this board. And in order for us to get data into this board, um, we're going to focus on this area right over here. In the holiday lighting hobby, uh, it's not common for us to use these specific connectors. These are three pin XLR connectors. However, it is more common for us to use the RJ45 or the Cat5e connectors and run our data using uh, uh, simple, normal uh, network wire. So what we're looking at here is we have one, two, three pads that are uh, on the board um, currently for us to connect up our own um, our own uh, RJ45 connections to the board. Uh, all this is is standard network wire and you'll see that there's a blue and an orange wire. Sometimes I'll use the brown wire instead of the blue but it's just what I had. Um, and what I did was I, I twisted the solid orange and the solid blue together and I twisted the blue stripe and the orange stripe together. The center solder pad here is your uh, neutral solder pad, and the left pad that you see here is your uh, data positive. Um, those are the only two wires that you really need to get this running. What I did was, since I have two wires run, I actually soldered two wires of each set to the board so that I could split it off. And uh, most of you are familiar with the Lightarama controllers, how they are able to have an input and an output so you can daisy chain from, this, from one controller here to another controller down the line. What, um, what's important to know is that I really only did uh, run one, one wire, but I ran, I ran two wires, but I, I'm splitting it so that either one of these can be an input or an output. Okay, so moving right along here, now we have a different view of the exact same board. I just flipped it upside down. Back, we've got a, uh, uh, a readable version of this dip switch setting, and I want to make this uh, as simple and brief as possible. Since for our test, we're going to run this controller with uh, the other controller, um, I need to set these dip switches so that this controller believes that it is a controller... Uh, number one, where the first output right here, up in the top left, the first output there, thinks that the red channel is channel number one. To make this channel number one, I'm going to set dip switch, dip switch setting to number one on. 
all of the other dip switches, whenever they're in the in the opposite position, are are off. Now you have to pay attention to your dip switch setting because some of them, the on is on the bottom and the off is on the top. But it will denote to you which is co the correct position for the dip switch. So uh, this is all. This controller here is now set up to be uh, our controller number one and channel number one through channel number 27 over up here on the on the outputs. We're going to set this controller to be our start channel to be 20 channel 28 and to do that we have to use the binary code and I actually go online and I go to the Shavat website and I look for the uh, DMX calculator. Now you can go on Google and find a DMX calculator. You can go and download them onto your phone. I know that on my uh, on my phone, I have an app that's for a dip switch calculator, so I can use it out in the display if I need to set something up or change it. And what uh, I'm going to set this dip switch setting to 3, 4, and 5 to be on. In the world of binary, um, I guess that that equates to being um, that equates to being channel 28. All right, so here we are. We're at our final step. We're about to make some network connections. Um, in, from the earlier videos, um, you saw our yellow data cable, and it was coming straight from here. I'll pan over here to from our computer over here, our laptop, and we uh, we ran it to the E six eighty two. Well, now we're going to get ready, and we're going to run we're going to run this cable into the six eighty two, which you've seen before. But also now we're going to start connecting up. Uh, our data cables to our controllers. And now I want you to notice, I'll zoom in here, that we have solid red lights on the controllers. You saw that earlier. And what's going to happen is we're going to start by plugging in to our WizNet the yellow data cable coming from the back of the computer. We now have E131 plugged in and running off of Lightarama. The next thing we're going to do, we've already made our connection with the data cable, which was in the last video, and we have our data connection. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect it up with our uh, RGB controller. We're going to call that controller number one. And as soon as we connect it up, we can see that we have a flashing LED uh, instead of the uh, solid LED, which is on the opposite controller over there. So, the next step is to connect up the network wire from the second controller right into the port. As soon as we connect it up, once again we see that our connections are good, we've soldered our boards correctly with our data cable, and now both DMX controllers are receiving DMX signal from the E682. All right, this is it, the moment you've been waiting for. The final results of our uh, labor of putting this together so that we could set up our laptop here on E131 to output to our E682 controller that would output DMX then to the two controllers that would run a very inexpensive, very simple DMX RGB display. What I'll do is I'll go turn out the lights, and um, I've, I'm, I spent some time. I made up a little bit of a sequence. Uh, it's not complete, but believe me, when you get into sequencing and you enjoy a song, you tend to let the time roll by. So I'm going to uh, go turn out the lights, and we'll get the show on the road, and you can see the fruits of the labor of getting set up with E131 outputting from your computer.